Joining us now is Eugenica Ojiope with stories trending around the world. Hello, Jenny. Good morning, Dr. Abati. How was your weekend? Went well. I noticed you. something different. We'll discuss after the show. Good morning, Ayo. How are you? Good morning, Oji. Perfect. Well, How was your weekend? Very good morning, good. Rafai. Good morning, Oji. Show wakba. Mo wakba. <laughs> All right. We both noticed the glasses and the suit. Oh, yes. yes. You look excellent, Dr. Dr. Abati. Dapa, that's the right I word. <laughs> Rufa, <Rufai> enough. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. What do you have for us? Is this your man? <laughs> Off your mic. All right. <laughs> well, all right. Good morning to you viewers. Here are some of the stories that are trending across the globe. In the United States, five military airmen of the 58th Special Operations Wing were recognized with the Distinguished Flying Cross and Air Medal for partaking in the longest distance nighttime hostage rescue mission in the country's military history. In 2020, the airmen reportedly flew about 2,000 miles from Rota, Spain to rescue 27-year-old Philip Walton held hostage by a group of armed men in Masalata, a small rural village in Niger near the Nigerian border. Two out of the five airmen received the award for the Distinguished Flying Cross, while the other three received the Air Medal for their heroic aerial flight and aerial support at Kirkland Air Force Base, New Mexico on January 11, 2023. In Brazil, President Luis Inácio Lula da Silva over the weekend sacked the country's army chief, General Julio Cesar de Arruda, two weeks after rioting took place in the country's capital, Brasilia. General Arruda had only been in the role since December 30th, 2022, just before former President Jair Bolsonaro's tenure ended. President Lula has said that he suspects members of the armed forces colluded with protesters that stormed government buildings in Brasilia on January 8th after managing to march largely unchallenged through the city. In Nigeria, the All Progressives Congress over the weekend held its presidential rally in Jigawa State, featuring the party's flag bearer, Bola Ahmed Tinubu and his running mate, Kashim Shatima, as well as the governor of the state, Mohamed Badaru, Senate President Ahmed Lawan, and the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Femi Bajabiamila, and other dignitaries. Then, the presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Peter Obi, and his running mate, Yusuf Dati Baba Ahmed, on Sunday, held their campaign rally in Kano State, following the presidential rally in the northern state of Kaduna, where they were received by a mammoth crowd. Under sports, Cristiano Ronaldo made his competitive debut on Sunday for his new club, Al Nassar, in their 1-0 win over Etifad in the Saudi Pro League. The 37-year-old Portugal forward joined the club last month on a deal that runs until 2025, reportedly earning more than £177 million per year. Ronaldo, who has played for Manchester United, Juventus and Real Madrid was greeted by banners and cheers from his adoring fans at King Saud University Stadium in Riyadh. The match comes after he scored twice in Riyadh All-Star 11's 5-4 defeat by Lionel Messi's Paris Saint-Germain in an exhibition match on Thursday, January 19th. Finally, under entertainment, Arise Fashion Week is back with its 20th edition showcasing exceptional designers from Africa and Africans in the diaspora. The event, themed Arise Fashion Week and Jazz Festival Future Forward, is set to be a celebration of African design and its progression over the years. The event will also showcase Arise's role in championing musical talents from the continent and beyond. From the 2nd of February, 
to the fourth against the backdrop of jazz-themed performances at the Echo Hotel and Suites in Lagos, Nigeria. But you can't wait, Dr. Bati. I can see you smiling. You're smiling too much. <laughs> Fantastic. I was, I was we'll hear more of that, right? Cheeky cheeky bum bum. I knew it. Ah. <laughs> well, congratulations to Arise at 20. I mean, we can't wait uh, for uh, February 2nd. Well, let's begin what's trending. With reactions trailing the call made by the Presidential Campaign Organization of the People's Democratic Party on Sunday for the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency and the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission to arrest and prosecute the presidential candidate of the All Progressives Congress, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, over drug peddling and money laundering allegations, the PDP Presidential Campaign Organization also called on President Muhammadu Buhari to protect the sovereignty of the nation and the integrity of the Nigerian military as the commander-in-chief by someone in the meeting of the National Security Council over the establishment of a parallel army called the Jagaban Army, set up by Tinubu, which they said was an affront on the Nigerian army designed to cause confusion, disrupt the 2023 election, and derail the democratic process, while calling for Tinubu's arrest at the media briefing in Abuja. The party's director of strategic communication, Dele Momodu, and the spokesperson of the Presidential Campaign Council, Daniel Buala, also called for the sacking of the spokesperson of the Presidential Campaign Council of the All Progressives Congress, Fessas Kiamo, for allegedly abusing his office. If you must ask for equity, you must come with clean hands. Uh, Mr. Fessas Kiamo, who happens to be in the APC government is using the privilege of being in government and also using his own chambers, which should be a conflict of interest, to terrorize a candidate they are, they are afraid of. He, while serving as a cabinet member and campaign spokesman, remember as a cabinet member is being paid by the taxpayers' money, is using the official privilege and the powers conferred on that office to intimidate agencies of government, including going to court and filing a case against the agent of the same branch of government to which he belongs. And this is happening at a time when the president told the world that he's going to deliver a legacy of free and fair election. So now it's raising concern. People are beginning to wonder whether it is the president who is by proxy using this cabinet member to infiltrate or influence or intimidate the agency of government. Well, in the meantime, a former managing director of Alpha Beta Consulting, Oladakbo Akwara, who accused the APC flag bearer, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, of owning the firm by proxy, has endorsed Tinubu as the best man to succeed President Muhammad Buhari. The former MD said he picked Tinubu as the most suitable contestant after a dispassionate assessment of all the candidates in the presidential race. Let's take some tweets. This is from Ade who wrote, Dakbo, you should have just been quiet. You sued this Tinubu claiming he diverted $22 billion and $4 million from the company you co-owned, Alpha Beta, after settling out of court. You have come to tell Nigerians Tinubu is the best man for the job. Unbelievable. Well, Femi wrote, Human beings, some people must have relied on this man's previous case against Tinubu to make reckless statements. And here he is singing praise of the same Tinubu. Rufai, I hear you giggling. I, I mean, it's politics season, so what do you expect? Yeah. So that's to show you that fights are not long lasting. Yes. Mr. Dakwa Kwara, we all know the case that went to the EFCC, ranted fire and brimstone, said everything against Balamed Tinubu. But now, is taking pages of newspaper to endorse, mm. you know, Bola Ahmed Tinubu. And it's the season of endorsements. But the question is, if we ask now, they'll say it's hate speech. Now, what weight does this endorsement carry <laughs> in all of this now? They will say it's hate speech. But, you know, it's another good endorsement of Bola Ahmed Tinubu. But it's all politics. I think Nigeria should not be deceived by all of this shenanigans going on. When you see these people, these elephants, these people that have constantly taken the commonwealth of Nigeria, because ask them critically, 
What businesses have they created in this country? It's just been a suck on the commonwealth. That's what they do. Like children have feeding bottles in their mouth. Their mouth is constantly in the feeding bottle of Nigeria's treasury. And they have benefited from states. Capture. They are, how many businesses do those people have quoted on the stock exchange? None. How many businesses have they provided? I explained thousands of people. None. It's just state resource, state capture. And you have them fighting amongst themselves, disgracing themselves. So are you surprised mm. that is this happening? Moving on to um, the PDP council saying that Mr. Festus Kiamo, you know, should be called to order and all of that. The question is, what is the code for ministers in the first place? Mm -hmm. Is a minister of states or labor in a country that has over 33% unemployment rate should even be campaign spokesperson and be speaking when there's high level of employment? Where do we even draw the line in the country? You know, because you see, illegality has become the order of the day. Immorality has eaten so deep that people don't even know where to draw the line. You have a minister of state that's also a campaign spokesperson. How can he do his work diligently? Mm. He's representing the states. If you want to do it and you truly want to focus on the campaign, why don't you resign? Mm. But you know, it's a tall order in Nigeria. People don't like to resign. You know, they like to keep insurance policies aside. So that's the kind of country we've built. Right. But Oji, what we should be sad about and what Nigerians should cry about daily is the fact that year on year, when we have elections, the system that produces people with questionable character should be what we should interrogate. Why is it that it is the worst of us? And like Chino Achebe said, our feet 11 that runs the country where the other best of us. And when you look at conversations, you ask, is it the same country we have Nobel laureates? Is it the same country we have intellectuals? Is it the same country we have Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie? We want the best for this country. Absolutely. But it all revolves around leadership. Right. Dr. Abati, what's your take on the former MD of Alpha Beta's sudden U-turn? Well, uh, Tinubu. obviously, Oladapo uh, Akpara is having his uh, Damascus uh, moment. <laughs> and he's entitled on the road to Damascus uh, to have his own moment. And, uh, you know, but literally what he has done is uh, it amounts to swallowing his own vomit. <laughs> <laughs> in 2002, he was all over the place accusing yeah. Ashwajobola Metinubu of running uh, Alpha Beta uh, by proxy as the owner, uh, you know, uh, money laundering, uh, fraudulent practices. He was all over the place. He was. Okay? The matter went to court. Uh, they settled uh, out of court. So now only, no, only God knows how he vomit has settled in his stomach. <laughs> and he's all over the place now saying, in fact, he has done, he claims, a dispassionate assessment. Absolutely. Underline, dispassionate yeah. assessment. And he believes that uh, Yashua Jubala Metinubu is the most suitable person for the office. In fact, he says he's the best. In fact, one paragraph in the piece that uh, uh, he purportedly wrote, he said, in fact, he, having worked with Yashua Jubala Metinubu for more than 20 years, he is convinced that this is the best man since the invention of uh, toothpaste. <laughs> I'm paraphrasing now. Not you know, size, human beings are like that. Mm -hmm. they, may, they may go this way uh, today. They may go that way tomorrow. It's obvious, you know, uh, he wants to vote for Ashwa Dibola And he's entitled to his choice. And it's good to see a man who said uh, so many negative things about Ashwa now recanting. Now the way know, some it. of these people, they have no principles anyway. The other issue that I would lo lo love to uh, talk about has to do with the reference by the PDP spokespersons to the emergence of something called the Jagaban Army. Absolutely. Uh, that was one aspect of, the, uh, of their press conference that I forgot to mention earlier on. Indeed, if you check uh, social media, there has been something called the uh, Air Force Wind of the Jagaban Army, you know, uh, the, a, 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 a chief of Air Force, chief of Army staff of uh, the Jagaban Army, in this particular case, the youth leader of the uh, APC, Dayo Israel, I've seen him wearing uh, uniforms and uh, you know posing as the leader of an army. Although he has also issued a statement saying that you know this uh, army does not pose a threat. However, 
I wonder what the security agencies are doing. Because the criminal code is very clear. Section 110 of the criminal code. If we check it, it says that you cannot claim to belong to an army of your own or wear uniform Absolutely. or insignia or any kind of conduct that gives the impression that you have a separate army. There's only one Nigerian army. You cannot go and create an army and then you go about wearing uniform. I mean, that Israel says where well, it doesn't pose any threat and all of that. Hey, but what does the law say mm. in section 110 of the criminal code? It does not even allow you to go and show any uniform that looks like that of no, any of the uh, branches of, of the Nigerian army. Yeah. And while, you know, we take it on the surface that this is not meant uh, to engage in any kind of military activities, I think I showed you uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu. She called that your Israel and uh, the Air Force that he leads, or the uh, 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 Jagaban Army that he leads, that, that would seem to be in contravention of Section 110 of the Criminal Code. Well said, Dr. Abati. We shall take another story. There was apprehension on Sunday as a train from Wari heading to Itakwe in Kogi State derailed, leaving as many as 300 passengers stranded in a forest between Ajaokuta and Itakwe. The incident is coming barely three weeks after gunmen stormed the train station in Edo State, where many passengers were abducted. According to reports, the train left Wari early on Sunday morning and got derailed at about noon inside the thick forest between Ajeokuta and Itakwe. Some sources have alleged a case of sabotage, saying that some of the rail tracks may have been removed, which might have been responsible for the derailment. Other sources say four coaches and the head coach of the train may have been badly affected. Ayo, how tragic is this incident? Very. Well, uh, thankfully, there were no lives lost, yes. according to reports, um, no casualties, oh no deaths recorded. And um, they were able to report the incident as quickly as possible to the NY NRC. However, this is unfortunate that just when we're still reeling from the kidnap situation in um, Tomikimi um, sta um, station of Igweben, mm -hmm. we're back here again with the worry attack by train derailing. We're still relieving the kidnapping on the Kaduna, yes. uh, Abuja train, um, trail line, rail, rail line, and we haven't yet finished you know, dealing with that. And here we are again with another real incident. I won't belabor the point, but just to say that what is the point of building infrastructure if people are afraid or unwilling to use infrastructure because you haven't provided um, system around it to ensure that people feel safe and able to use what you provided for the people. In one of the interviews, uh, one of the relatives of one of the kidnapped people from um, the Edo State um, kidnapping said, her name is Favor, she just gave her name as Favor, that now she wouldn't be using the, trail, um, the rail line anymore, even though it is easier and faster for her to use on that line. So the question then begs that, is it that people or the, the Nigerian government, because this is the NRC now, is it that there are things done to frustrate the lives of Nigerians deliberately? Nigerians are on the queue currently. Um, there's traffic because of the horrible queues on our road. Absolutely. People don't have access to fuel. It is frustrating. People are upset and angry. And then other areas to try to assuage the suffering of Nigerians in terms of um, infrastructure provided is also frustrating for people because security is not guaranteed. I believe that at this point, heads have to start rolling. For things to happen. Like with I said, unfortunately, we don't have a culture of stepping down or you know exiting because you have obviously failed in your duties. But Nigerians must begin to demand for better services to its people. The government cannot frustrate its own people that they are supposed to be serving. So yes, no lives were lost, but it means that there's decreased confidence in the services provided by the Nigerian Railway Corporation, and that's very sad. I'm going to discuss the frustration of Nigerians, but we'll take our final story so we can discuss all together. The impending full scarcity in many states across the country has left many Nigerians stranded and frustrated in long queues. However, some have found ways to relieve their stress. As we'll see in this video by event host Osakwe Iobisa, who says that there is nothing that unites Nigerians like suffering? <laughs> Let's take a look. Get your PVC. If you like, don't get your PVC. That is your idea. In fact, it's even better you don't vote because 
it's good that we suffer like this see the time it's almost 2 a.m and we are out here trying to get for we're in the queue but this is the the upside of it is that this thing is even good we should be here in the queue and be struggling to get fuel at 2 a.m. or 1 a.m. It encourages team bonding or uh, ethnicity bonding. Because in this queue now, I've met some people from other ethnic groups. I've met an Igbo man, I've met a Yoruba man, I've met an Aosa man, and we are bonding as Nigerians. So, left to me, don't vote for good governance. Let's continue like this so that we can meet ourselves in queue in midnight, encourage ourselves here. This one, even VIP people, the people that are inside, we are VIP because we have paid 2K at the gates to enter. Everybody that is outside, they never pay. They did queue since 6 o'clock. We, we have jumped the queue. We are VIP Nigerians. So, that's, see us now, VIP. We don't pay 2K for gates. All the people that have not paid, they have been there since 6 o'clock. They will not pay now. Come, well, they are still bonding with other Nigerians in the regular. We, we did VIP. We did both for VIP. <laughs> don't vote good governance. So don't get your PVC. Come on, why are you getting PVC? Don't get your PVC. Just stay there. May we all day. May we they suffer because suffer don't go tire us. You understand? Uh -huh. I mean, so, this is what we call entire... suffering and smiling, Dr. Abati. This is as funny as this is, it's actually not. It. Yes. Suffering and smiling. Yes, Dr. Abati. 99 standing, 49 sitting, whatever. Anyway, I, what I see in that uh, video is a sarcasm. Yes. Uh, the guy is saying he's a VIP at uh, 4 a.m. at uh, Fuel Station. <laughs> And he had to pay two thousand. You know, uh, it's a sarcasm. It's yeah. a description of the you know agony yes. uh, that Nigerians are going through. Of course, it doesn't mean it when he says, uh, "Don't get your PVC. Let us continue to suffer." But of course, it's unfortunate. On the uh, uh, what is line? I think one thing is it's not just that uh, service on that line that should be suspended. I think the Nigerian Railway Corporation itself uh, should be suspended <laughs> by the president. Until we get it right. Absolutely, I agree with you. Anyway, I understand we have to go. Yes. Thank you very well, much. Thank you all for your great analysis as always. Well, that's all I have for you on what's trending today. I'll see you all tomorrow.